You're all probably very excited about iOS 18, and so am I. But as someone who uses a Mac for the majority of their day, both at work and at home, the new features in macOS Sequoia are the ones that I look forward to even more than the iOS 18 updates. And there are seven major updates here. The first being window tiling. Finally! Yes, Windows has had this for years, I mean decades, and on the Mac you literally had to use a third-party app instead. There is some talk on the interwebs about Microsoft owning the patent for their Windows snapping, reason why Apple was unable to implement it into their OS. But at the same time, third-party apps were free to do so, and the patent does seem to have been renewed to 2034. Yeah, so I'm not really sure what happened with all of this. If any of you know more about the whole Windows, Windows snapping patent, and Apple implementing this just now, please leave a comment down below because I would love to hear more. But I am very glad to see it here, as I've been using the third-party app called Magnet for many, many years now. But after trying Apple's window tiling, I gotta say, it's not great. Mainly for two reasons. First, some apps simply cannot scale properly to occupy exactly one half of the display. The Music app and the Apple TV app are some good examples of this. Whenever I try to snap them to one side, they always end up overlapping each other, preventing a perfect 50-50 window split. This issue has existed before, but I was hoping that Apple would address it with native support for window tiling. And then second, the shortcut keys to move the windows around isn't very clear. With Magnet, I'm simply used to holding Ctrl plus Option and then using my arrow keys to quickly tile my windows. However, the shortcut for Apple's window management seems to be Fn plus Ctrl and then followed by uh, the Control keys. This was found by a user on Mac Rumors and it's just not explained by Apple in the settings. The default method is simply dragging the windows to the side uh, to have this white border appear and then you can tile them that way. But the problem is that this actually clashes with all the other macOS gestures, like App Expose or switching to the next space. Luckily, this can be disabled in the settings, and then you can simply just use the control keys, or you can also hold Option to have this white border appear as well. Okay, the second big new update is something that I think I will be using a lot, and that is iPhone continuity. It allows you to stream a live view of your iPhone to your Mac, and even control it with the mouse and keyboard, all while your iPhone stays locked. And I can already think of so many use cases for this. For example, whenever I post the socials for Apple wallpapers, I download them from Notion, where my team uploads them to, onto my Mac. Then I airdrop them to my iPhone, which is where I post them from. And this means that I can just open up the iPhone viewer on my Mac and not only drag and drop the files with ease, but even do the full posts from there using my Mac's mouse and keyboard. This would easily save me a couple of minutes every single time I post. Or if I have to send one of our sponsors some stats from one of our promotions, I can simply check the analytics directly in the iPhone viewer on my Mac, take a screenshot there, and then send it over via an email all from my Mac. No need to pick up my iPhone and do a lot of back and forward between them. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this feature. Although it doesn't seem to be launching at the same time as iOS 18, as it is currently listed as coming later this year rather than coming in the fall. Now, the third big update in macOS Sequoia is writing tools. This unfortunately requires an M1 Mac or newer as it is part of the Apple Intelligence AI features. But essentially, whenever you write something on your Mac, no matter whether that's in notes or email or Word, or even through the web, you'll be able to summarize that text with ease or even rewrite it entirely in a different style. Plus, you can also use this for proofreading and correct your mistakes. And for me, this is massive, as I do write a lot on my Mac. I write the scripts for these videos, as well as respond to and send emails. Sometimes I do make use of ChatGPT to help compact my scripts, However, even with the dedicated ChatGPT Mac app, I still need to open it and copy and paste the text that I want shortening in there. Apple's approach will be built into the OS, and hence work with any writing tool or app, which means that I would no longer have to copy and paste my text into ChatGPT, and everything will be much faster, and like I said, since it's built in, it would literally make me use it even more often. Now, macOS Sequoia is full of tons of features that can save you a lot of time. And speaking of saving you a lot of time, uh, do you see this video playing in the background? This is actually a video that Clean My Mac did, and it is a nine hour video manually cleaning up an old MacBook from a ton of bloatware. Well, if you don't have nine hours to waste, 
you can do it in seconds, thanks to Clean My Mac, which I've been using every single week for years. The smart scan button is as easy as it gets. One press and my Mac is polished up to perfection in usually less than a minute. Also, Clean My Mac's menu app makes it so easy to keep on top of everything. How's my battery performing? Does my RAM need any cleaning? It's all there in my menu bar. Plus, an installer cleans my Mac of forgotten apps without leaving a trace, and Space Lens gives me an ideal perspective on what's taking up all of my Mac space. I highly recommend Clean My Mac, which you can try for free with their 7-day trial. And then you can use code ZONEOFTECH20 for 20% off. The fourth big upgrade is when it comes to Spotlight Search. More specifically, thanks to Apple Intelligence, once again, Spotlight Search becomes way more powerful, as, just like on iOS and iPadOS, it is now able to cross-reference information from multiple apps. And don't get me wrong, Spotlight Search is already pretty decent, as you can already search for a password photo and it will find it in an instant. And the only difference is that now you'll be able to say, find a photo of a friend wearing a specific jacket from August 2023, and it will be able to find that exact photo. The fifth upgrade is something that a lot of you doing uh, a lot of video calls are definitely going to enjoy, and it is called background replacements. So yes, we now have custom backgrounds for FaceTime that can range from solid colors to landscapes to even custom photos. But the best part is that this isn't just restricted to FaceTime. Any app that uses your camera will be able to take advantage of the new backgrounds. Simply go to this camera icon right here at the top, and then you can adjust them from there. And this is awesome, as I do go on product briefing calls and business calls multiple times a month, and sometimes the app that I'm using just doesn't support backgrounds, and sometimes I just wanna make my actual background look a bit nicer. So this is a great change. Another great change is the new Safari Reader. More specifically, Safari has had a reader for many years, so that isn't new. Uh, once a website loaded, you had this button that removed all ads, and it also gave you just the text and only images on the website. <laughs> Essentially a far better reading experience than without it. But now the Safari Reader is simply on steroids. First, the button is now way more noticeable and it's there all the time. Second, you can now change the page color as well as the font color. And then third, and this is by far the best, you can configure the reader to automatically be enabled on a specific website. So if there's a website that you visit a lot, let's say CNET, that unfortunately also has a lot of ads, you can just toggle that auto reader and every time you open up any article from that website it will get opened up in the reader view giving you a clean web page every single time and here's the thing while i do see myself using this feature quite a lot i also think that it would have or could have a serious impact on the ad revenue for these websites as a fellow creator i cannot help but think about the impact that auto reader will have on them. Like, imagine Apple giving you the option to permanently disable YouTube ads at a click of a button. That'll be something that's, well, good, would also impact our specific revenue and our ability to make videos here. Um, so yeah, I'm really curious to see what the industry has to say about Apple's new reader here. Which brings me to the last macOS Sequoia update that's pretty huge, and that is when it comes to gaming. Look, I'm really happy to see Apple embracing gaming more on the Mac every single year. Uh, thanks to Apple Silicon, for example, and tools like the Game Porting Toolkit, we are now seeing actual AAA titles come to the Mac. We can now play No Man's Sky, Baldur's Gate 3, Resident Evil Village and 4, and Death Stranding. And the next Assassin's Creed release, Shadows, is also coming to the Mac, which is huge. Because unlike all the other games, this one is coming on day one. And while the iPad is getting it too, the Mac allows you to adjust graphical settings. So if you've got a powerful Apple Silicon Mac, you can get some impressive graphics in these AAA titles. But what's even more impressive is the new Game Porting Toolkit 2, which offers even better compatibility with Windows games allowing developers to port their games to the Mac faster. So alongside the impressive AAA titles that we already have, we should start to see even more titles transitioning to the Mac soon. And I would love to hear your thoughts on these seven big changes. But the thing is, there's of course even more changes that are worth mentioning, like the categorization improvements in Apple Mail, uh, and also the ability to schedule messages, and also, the beautiful new Macintosh wallpapers. Uh, do let us know if you think we should make a similar pack for our app wallpapers. Like, we do already have Apple Ray, which by the way features a ton of unique Apple products. 
which I think you guys will love, as well as Illustrative Illusions, which isn't focused on Apple products, but rather on some super detailed hand-drawn icons in different themes, such as movies, music, gaming, and more. And as always, you can get Wallpaper Store free from the App Store and the Play Store. Uh, but yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts on Mac OS Sequoia, and what changes do you see yourself using the most? I'm Daniel, this is North Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. This is North Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.